well, well, long time no see. The last concert that I had planned for 2023 was uh, going with my one friend to see Udo from the heavy metal band Except. Unfortunately, for unknown reasons, that tour got canceled, so that kind of ended my uh, concert series for the year 2023. But now that we're back in 2024, the new round of concerts has started. And the first one of this year was the amazing Sabaton and Judas Priest. A little bit ago, Judas Priest was actually on their 50th anniversary tour celebrating 50 years of heavy metal rocking and rolling. And unfortunately, I just didn't get a chance to go and I was, I was pretty bummed out that I couldn't make it. But when I saw that they were releasing their new album, Invincible Shield, and going on a subsequent tour to go ahead and tour and promote and play songs, well, I just had to go ahead and hop on that train. Believe it or not, I was never really a Judas Priest fan growing up. Uh, growing up in a relatively Catholic household, you know, there, there was always this negative connotation of metal being evil and worshipping the devil and dumb stuff like that, and that the Catholic Church will shove down your throat to stop you from having any fun. And once I was able to go to college in, in 2013, I was able to experiment with, with music and, and explore and, and find different things that I, that I might actually really enjoy without that shackle of, of that Catholic household being weighed down on me. And so my introduction to Judas Priest was actually not Judas Priest themselves, but through Five Finger Death Punch. My friends were always really big into Five Finger Death Punch, so I was as well. And they released a single called Lift Me Up with Rob Halford. And that was one of my favorite Five Finger Death Punch songs. And with that, it was my introduction to Judas Priest. What was fortunate was that there was a lot of fantastic music to go ahead and, and enjoy and discover. Most notably about Judas Priest is I absolutely love the cover art. I mean, it's iconic, very similar to Iron Maiden, but different in its own way. Uh, Judas Priest has always had really, really kick-ass album covers. Even though this was well before my time, like I was I was only born in 94, I do miss the idea of that really kick-ass album covers. And some bands have continued with it. Uh, Disturbed, as an example, has always had really, really good album covers. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the opener was going to be Sabaton. And if you haven't heard of Sabaton, you definitely know them from this. If you're not familiar with Sabaton, all memes honked aside, they are actually a Swedish heavy metal band, although truly being heavy metal, they of themselves have contested before. Uh, they are a primarily historical-based heavy metal band. So what they do is they take uh, soldier types, uh, history, war throughout history, and they or historical, historical events of, of great battles, and they turn them into amazing heavy metal songs. The best way that I can describe Sabaton to someone who has no idea is, you know that meme where it says, guys see this and go hell yeah? Hell yeah. So obviously I was very, very, very excited to go ahead and have them be a part of the Judas Priest tour. Best opener I've ever seen. I mean, the, the vocals themselves, I, I think, were incredible. Um, it's just five guys, but when they all sing together, the way that they harmonize and they, they were able to project their voices, it sounds like a chorus of men, soldiers, fighters, whoever, getting ready to fight some sort of amazing historical battle. Now, I will say Sabaton is not necessarily critical on wars and violence like some bands may may be like rise against but because they focus on history there is this like grandeur to it and they do such a great job of displaying that grandeur on how we in the modern age look at the all of these historical battles <laughs> They did, of course, play The Last Stand, which was the meme song that I played earlier, which was phenomenal. I, I got to admit, that is, that is, jokes aside, one of my favorite songs. But my personal favorite song from them is Shiriyama. It's a song about 
The Last Stand of the Samurai, and it is kick ass. <laughs> absolutely kick-ass. I, I think it's very funny how in the metal community we, you know, people have a tendency to like look really, really, really tough, but then be very, very nice and friendly. And of course the same was true for them as well. The the, the band starts and all of them have like this long, long, full, full, flowing, glorious hair and they're thrashing and headbanging and all that. And the singer comes out and he's a bald, and he's a bald shaved man like myself. And I felt seen. So, you know, he's singing and he's deep and it's awesome and it's like super, super hyper masculine and then he says hello we are a band from sweden but uh Sabagin was certainly uh, up there with uh some of the most friendly artists i've ever seen and so with having such an explosive opener you might think that this kind of show would be hard to top and admittedly it would have been for any other band but the headliner is not just any band the headliner is of course judas priest <laughs> Defining characteristics that made Judas Priest so breakthrough at the time and so influential in the metal genre when it was first happening in uh, it was 1974 when they first started. They have speed metal, so like high, crazy fast shredding, and of course the high vocals. Now Rob Halford is an absolute chad of a man, very similar to Bruce Dickinson. Both of these two metal singers stand out because they are trained correctly to not hurt themselves. This is why at the ripe old age of 75, Rob Halford is still able to go ahead and hit those high notes. Granted, can't quite hold them as long, but that's to be expected. The dude is a champion. The show started off with one of my favorite songs from the newest album, Panic Attack. And then from there, it was just an absolute beast of a set list. Of course, we had my personal favorite Judas Priest song, Breaking the Law. We of course had another thing coming. We of course had Painkiller. Even the songs from the new album were still pretty good. Like I said, Panic Attack, Invincible Shield, and one of my new favorite songs, Crown of Horns. I rarely get emotional, or at least like physically like emotional at these kinds of shows besides like excitement and joy and all that. But just something about Crown of Horns just like just touched deep inside of me and I was like, ah, I feel that, Rob. I feel that. It really is a really nice song and I really do enjoy the entirety of, of, of Invincible Shield, so I do recommend going ahead and, and, and checking it out, especially if you haven't already and if you're gonna go see Judas Priest on tour very soon. The singing, fantastic. Hitting those high notes, doing that scream on Painkiller, absolutely phenomenal. The playing, Great. The sound mixing, also really, really good. Uh, you know, both bands, both Sabaton and Judas Priest, both of them were very clear and concise on, on their pronunciation. You're able to actually hear the vocals. You know, it wasn't just like a hot mess of noise, which can happen sometimes. Everything about it was just absolutely phenomenal. The highlights of the show is that uh, when they came out doing Hell Bent for Leather, Another song I'm very, very fond of. Uh, Rob, Rob Halford came out on like a motorcycle. He's got the leather jacket and hat. It was funny because every single song he had a costume change. So like there was a little side panel where he would just kind of walk off, grab another coat and walk back on. And he did this like every song he would do it between songs and back and forth and back and forth. It was entertaining to see him come back and forth and go out with some new drip. It's fascinating to me what an icon Rob Halford is, not just for heavy metal, 
but also for the LGBT community. You know, he himself is a gay man who influenced by the likes of Freddie Mercury. And it's interesting, you know, how he would kind of struggle with that throughout the years. And you could kind of see just little hints of it throughout the music. And it's fascinating to me that, you know, the, that, that he was able to survive as long as he did, given, given the time that he was around and grew up and was, you know, active as the most with Judas Priest. And it's almost indescribable how, what it's like to go ahead and see a legend like that on stage and performing and, and being fantastic. <laughs> Obviously, we get to this point in the show, and <laughs> I think it's safe to assume that with such an incredible performance from both groups, this is not a tour to miss. The going ahead and seeing both Sabaton and Jews Priest for Invincible Shield is just absolutely incredible from start to finish. My only complaint, and it is such a, such a minor, minor little complaint, it just goes by a little too fast. And that's the nature of metal, right? You get into it, you're getting worked up, you're shredding and it's going, it's great and it's great and it's great. And then it, it just kind of stops. You know, it, it's a lot of metal bands kind of have that issue where it's like, okay, we've done, we've done the songs that we can, that we can reasonably do. We've done our set. Okay, let's get out of here. And uh, obviously it can't last forever. You know, that would be foolish to think that any musician can play, especially how heavy it can be. You know, more than you know, more than two hours, most musicians anyway. But that feeling of of wanting more, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it makes me want to go ahead and re-listen to all, all the albums from to back. It makes me want to go ahead and check out Sabaton and make playlists for the gym and and while I'm walking and running and things like that to work out. So that that feeling of, of wanting more is not necessarily a bad thing. If you are a metal fan, if you're a hard rock fan. If you like any sort of the new age metal and you're curious to see where the roots of it comes from, this is absolutely, absolutely the tour for you. And the tour for anyone. Now we get to the part of the show where we go ahead and check out any band shirts or merchandise that I may have gotten. I was kind of on the fence about getting a shirt this time, but check out this bad boy. So I don't know if you can quite see here, but this is the uh, it, one of the Invincible Shield tour shirts. And right here, is like this night dude. He looks like Guts from Berserk. It's it, it's clearly clearly has to be inspired by Berserk to some capacity. It, it it just has to be. Now I know that Judas Priest has always kind of had a theme of of knights and fighting, like you know as metal does. But the Guts shirt, definitely definitely my new favorite. Now I know it's been a long time since I went ahead and uploaded, but I have a lot of concerts coming up, so I'll be sure to get some good content on on a reasonably, uh, a reasonably more manageable scale for the remainder of the year. Uh, you'll notice the background, I've, I've recently moved and things are kind of changing with my life, but I still want to go ahead and make videos from time to time here. Um, you know, as always, hey, you know, thank you so very much for getting this far and watching, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.